Hey guys and welcome back to our phase 365 concepts. Today we are going to deep dive into the world of Mailflow connectors. We will talk about scenarios where you need Mailflow connectors and I will walk you through the step by step process of creating Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online. Mailflow connectors are used to control the way emails flow to and from Microsoft 365 organization. In Exchange Online, there are two types of Mailflow connectors, inbound and outbound. We can create multiple types of connectors in Exchange Online. This screenshot is taken from Exchange Online from where you create Mailflow connectors. Now here we can see we can create connectors to route emails from Office 365 to your organization's email server or from Office 365 to partner organization, from partner organization to Office 365 or from your organization's email server to Office 365. But let's understand what type of connector is required in what type of scenario. There are few scenarios where you need Mailflow connectors and in few scenarios you do not need connectors. When you want to send emails from Microsoft 365 to Internet, you don't need Mailflow connector. Or if you want to receive emails in your tenant from Internet, you don't need Mailflow connector for this scenario as well. The first scenario where you need a Mailflow connector is if you have on premises exchange server where all the mailboxes are hosted and you are using exchange online protection or EOP to send emails. Those are received and sent from on premises exchange server. So in this scenario, you have to route all incoming and outgoing emails to EOP for scanning. And in this scenario, you need two Mailflow connectors in exchange online. The first connector will be inbound connector that will be from your organization's email server to Office 365. And the second connector will be outbound connector that will be from Office 365 to your organization's email server. Now in this video, we are talking about Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online. For this scenario and most of the upcoming scenarios, you need to create connectors in on-premise as well. But that is out of scope for this video. But if you want to learn how to create Mailflow connectors in Exchange Server, I have mentioned link for those videos in description. You can go through them later. The second scenario where you need Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online is if you have on premises Exchange Server and you have Office 365 tenant, some of the mailboxes are hosted in on premises and some of the mailboxes are hosted in Office 365. And you want to send emails from on premises users to Exchange Online users and vice versa. In this scenario as well, you need two Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online. One inbound connector that will be from your organization's email server to Office 365 and one outbound connector that will be from Office 365 to your organization's email server. But if you have on premises Exchange Server and Office 365 tenant, it is always recommended to deploy Exchange Hybrid. If you have a supported version of Exchange Server in on premises, when you run HCW, it automatically creates two connectors in Exchange Online. But if you do not want Exchange Hybrid deployment, you need to create two connectors manually in Exchange Online. The third scenario where you need Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online is if you have Microsoft 365 tenant and all mailboxes are hosted in Exchange Online and you want to relay emails from a printer, an application, or from any other device. Now in Office 365, there are three options to relay emails, client submission, direct send, and SMTP relay with connector. If you choose SMTP relay with connector, then you need one inbound connector in Exchange Online that will be from your organization's email server to Office 365. So using this connector, you will route emails from a device to Office 365 users. And in this scenario, you do not need outbound connector. Only one inbound connector is sufficient. The fourth scenario where you need Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online is if you have Microsoft 365 tenant and all mailboxes are hosted in Exchange Online and you are using a third party email filtering solution. In this setup, MX record is pointed on third party email filtering server. So when an email is sent from Internet to your tenant, that email is first delivered to third party email filtering server and then it is routed to Exchange Online. And same way, when you send emails from Exchange Online to Internet, those emails will be routed to third party email filtering server and from third party email filtering server to Internet. In this scenario, you need two Mailflow connectors in Exchange Online. One will be inbound connector that will be from partner organization to Office 365 
that will be used to receive emails from third party email filtering server. And the second connector will be the outbound connector that will be from Office 365 to partner organization. This outbound connector will be used to route all external emails to third party email filtering server. The next scenario where you need mail flow connectors in Exchange Online is you have Microsoft 365 tenant. All mailboxes are hosted in Exchange Online and you want to use a signature service to add automatic signatures on all incoming and outgoing emails. In this scenario, you need two mail flow connectors in Exchange Online. One will be inbound connector that will be from partner organization to Office 365 and one outbound connector that will be from Office 365 to partner organization. Outbound connector will be used to route emails to signature server. Signature server will add signatures within the emails and using inbound connector, emails will be routed back to Office 365. And from Office 365, those emails will be routed to internet. There is one more scenario where you need to create mail flow connectors in Exchange Online. If you have a business partner with whom you share sensitive information in emails, you need to create one inbound connector that will be from partner organization to Office 365 and one outbound connector that will be from Office 365 to partner organization. Now let's move towards our lab and let me show you practically how we can create connectors in different scenarios. To manage mail flow connectors, you will go to Exchange Admin Center, Mail Flow, and then you will go to Connectors. Let's assume we have on-premises Exchange Server and we are using Exchange Online Protection for email scanning. So first, we will create one inbound connector. We will click Add a Connector and from your organization's email server to Office 365. Because this connector will be used to receive emails from on-premises Exchange Server. Click Next. Now here you need to give it a name. For example, from on-prem to Office 365. Make sure connector is set to turn on and retain internal exchange email header is also turned on. If this option is checked, it retains internal headers within the email header. That means the email is treated as trusted internal email. Click Next. Under authenticating sent email, you can either use subject name of the certificate being used in on-premises or you can use IP address of the on-premises exchange server. If you use certificate, make sure the certificate has your domain name added to authenticate with Office 365. And if you use IP address, then IP address should be an external IP and it should be accessible from internet. I will add one random IP address, for example, 1.2.0. 3.4 click plus and click next review the settings and then click create connector next we need to create one outbound connector to route emails from exchange online to on-premises exchange server so we will click add a connector and this time we will select from office 365 to your organization's email server click next give it a name for example from office 365 to on premises. Make sure this is set to turn on and retain internal exchange email header is also turned on. Click next. From here, we can configure what sort of emails we want to route from Office 365 to on premises exchange server. The first option is for email messages sent to all your organization. Accepted domain is the domain that is verified within your organization, be it Office 365 or on-premises exchange server. So this option says, do you want to route emails? Those are sent to all accepted domains in your on-premises organization. If yes, then you will select this option. Second option is only when I have a transport rule set up that redirects messages to this connector. We generally do not use this option in this scenario, but just for your information, Let's say you want to route only specific emails from internet to on-premises based on some conditions. For example, if sender's domain is abc.com. Let me show you this practically. Go to Exchange Admin Center. Let's open another window. Go to Mailflow. Go to Rules. Add a rule. Create a new rule. In condition, you will select is sender domain is abc dot com and in action you will select redirect the message to the following connector 
and then you will select the connector name that you will create in exchange online this is called conditional based routing the email routing that is controlled using a transport rule and a connector that routing is called conditional based routing and the third option is only when email messages are sent to these domains instead of sending emails to all accepted domains in your on premises you can select this option and you will add the specific domains here for which you want to receive emails once you make the selection as per your requirement go next under routing you need to mention the fully qualified domain name or the ip address of the exchange server to which exchange online protection will deliver the emails for example we can type the ip address this ip address will be the external ip address of the on premises exchange server click plus and then click next under security restrictions we will specify how office 365 should connect to on premises exchange server make sure tls option is checked and you need to check the option that says add the subject name or subject alternative name matches this domain name and add your on premises domain name here for example office 365 concepts.com but make sure you have a third party certificate for this domain in your on premises exchange server click next now here you will add an email address of one of the active mailboxes in on premises exchange server office 365 will use this email address to connect to your on premises exchange server so i will add a random email address here for example abc at office 365 concepts.com click add and then you will click validate and once this connector is validated successfully click create connector and the connector will be created same way if you want to create partner connector click add a connector and then select partner organization to office 365 or from office 365 to partner organization click next and follow the instructions so if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and if you have questions or suggestions feel free to write in the comments below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video